How do you create personalization in sports technology while also honoring the privacy of professional athletes? Okay, with the privacy of the professional athletes, we get some permission. So it's the case we do have their permission to disclose some aspects around some of their performance. It's like, for instance, like in the NFL with the Wonder League, some of those scores shouldn't be disclosed um, because there's information about their cognitive capabilities and how it may impact their performance. But it's the case with the work that we do, we don't disclose unless we have that information. We have their permission. So it's something where some folks don't necessarily mind us saying, hey, we, we profiled you. You were one of our top guys. And, oh, go ahead. That's your, that's, that's your great. So it provides a building up the profile. So we're talking about that professional athlete, and at the same time, helping to build up the profile at the same time as a, as a startup in the space, disrupting a player selection and all in your experience, how many athletes are open to sharing this knowledge versus not? Uh, for some, it depends because the relationships, we have a wide variety of things that come in play. For instance, um, some agents won't allow athletes to take assessments at all, so it's hands off. Um, but others, they want to show themselves, they want to get the greatest marketing that they can so that a team can potentially pick them up and place them on the roster. So, what do you say to the athletes that are cautious about technology like this? Um, what I would say is, given an opportunity, um, it's the case that with having information about how you perform at various levels can help you negotiate better contracts. It can help you get exposure to other teams who might not have realized that you had the kind of capability to play. Um, so some teams are, some individuals are hesitant to take assessments. Um, and for me, I started out in this space, I hated tests. That's one reason why I got it, because I thought tests were biased, didn't necessarily predict performance well, and that was one of my main criteria for moving into the space, making assessments better, making assessments predictive. If they don't predict performance, you shouldn't use it. That, like the Wonder League right now, you can't, they can't, it cannot predict performance. It does not predict performance, because it doesn't measure the same aspects that are related to on-field performance. It measures verbal and verbal and quantitative reasoning, which is processed on one side of the brain, versus visual and spatial processing, which happens on the other side of the brain. So we propose tests that measures the visual and spatial processing on the other side of the brain. And actually, some of the assessments we talked about in this particular session were quite predictive of on-field performance for football players, in addition to the work that we've done for basketball players. How can an athlete train themselves to be a better cognitive learner or better on the field mentally? So there are a variety of different characteristics and there's some training that's well documented in science. Um, for instance, there was, there's aspects around video game play. One particular game that's interesting, Tetris. Um, that's a, a game that individuals can easily like download and play because they're engaged in mental rotation, encoding, processing, and manipulating images. And so those are some of the same things that athletes are doing real time on the court as well. Um, encoding, processing, and making inferences about in visual and spatial information. Encoding, processing, and manipulating visual and spatial information. So those are just some things that a downloadable um, app, playing Tetris, um, and there are a few other video games as well that's well documented in the cognitive science literature that's been shown to increase visual spatial processing or mental rotation ability. Where will your company be in the next two years? In the next two years, I foresee us um, with a blockchain-based application that is planetary scale, that a variety of teams are using not only in basketball, but also in football and in soccer as well. So we would like for a wide variety of different customers in professional sports at the collegiate level and esports as well. To, so it's the case an athlete can log onto our platform, take the assessment, have their cognitive profile available and they will be able to release that information to any team that they want any team that they want for instance like with the um, SAT right now you have to put in a request to the educational testing service or another organization to send your test scores to a, a college of your choice for instance at the same time for your college if you graduated with a degree you have to um, go to your university, pay $10, $20 to get your data. So it's the case with our organization, our goal is the case that any individual who have assessment data on our platform can 
ac get access to that data because it, we have a digital signature that they can say, yes, this is a digitally signed um, certified result for our assessment and we're providing it to any or they can provide it to any organization that they would like sports organization any agents um, professional level or at the collegiate level as well if they are say for instance high school athletes looking to get information to college coaches say hey look at my cognitive profile looks how it relates to sports performance and now they have the certified data um, from our platform that says, hey, this is a valid test. It predicts performance, um, unlike the SAT, where they don't disclose whether or not the assessment tool is a valid predictor of first-year college success as freshmen or with the GRE, first-year college success as a graduate student. So in like in employment organizations as well, it's the case you take employment tests. A lot of people do not know if those tests actually predict performance, and that's where we come into place. We're we're showing we're presenting data; it's open, anyone can validate it. Where we show that there is a statistical relationship between performance on the assessment tool and subsequent performance on the job, or subsequent performance on on the field in any particular in any particular sport. So that's our goal: to make it more open, make it more transparent. So in the sense that you begin to remove the barriers, you take your data back. It belongs to you at the end of the day, and you can decide who do you like to disclose it. What sport in particular benefits the most from cognitive learning? I think at this point, uh, an emerging sport, not a lot of people are focused on at this point, eSport. Um, so you're seeing a lot of players becoming rock stars, like overnight. So it was the case, I gave a, present, gave a talk, and it was a... a, a Esports team that actually approached us and say, we would like to be able to use this data to recruit athletes across the, these esports athletes across the country and across the world. United States is not as competitive as some countries in Asia Pacific in esports. We're like the D League, so similar to where we're number one in basketball. So it's the case that other other countries are lower level. So we can take a college team and whip a professional to be the professional team in another country. But it's the case in esports, we're nowhere close. But yet, with our cognitive assessments, with our adaptive assessment systems, and with our AI algorithms, we can begin to select and identify the best talent that we have in the U.S. to be so that we can compete competitively, competitively across the globe.